get to go, but I can't go back there. Okay. <laughs> I guess we should get started. Or we'll give it one more minute. Yeah. Well, nice to see everyone here. How's it going with, with your your daily readings and, and some practices? Good. Yeah. Well, oh, and <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, what we're going to do, um, I had I had a different prayer that I was going to do, but I think this is nice. This was given to me by uh, by Joyce, and it comes from Jesus Calling by Sarah Young, and it's for December 7th. So I'd like to read that as our beginning, and then what we're going to do is have uh, a minute or two of getting ourselves settled, and we'll do some, some breathing and some, some quiet meditation for, for a bit. I am with you in all that you do, even in the most menial task. I am always aware of you, concerned with every detail of your life. Nothing escapes my notice, not even the number of hairs on your head. However, your awareness of my presence falters and flickers. As a result, your life experience feels fragmented. When your focus is broad enough to include me in your thoughts, you feel safe and complete. When your perception narrows so that problems or details fill your consciousness, you feel empty and incomplete. Learn to look steadily at me in all your moments and all your circumstances. Though the world is unstable and in flux, you can experience con continuity through your uninterrupted awareness of my presence. Fix your gaze on what is unseen, even as the visible world parades before your eyes. It's very beautiful. Thank you, Joyce. I like the part right near the end that says, though the world is unstable and in flux, you can experience continuity through your uninterrupted awareness of my presence. So this is a it's a good jump off point to having a few minutes just to catch our breath and to get us focused. The hardest thing about running from out there into a study or a meeting or whatever is our mind's still going like this. A lot of times we're looking, we're thinking, okay, well, when the hour's up, we got to go do such and such, I still got to go to the store, um, you know, all that good stuff. And those with dogs, we've got to get home, let the dog out. <laughs> or dogs. Yeah. So let's take a moment. Just make yourself comfortable. Sit, sit, sit in that comfortable way. Um, generally, just straighten up. You can have your hands on your lap. You can have your hands together. Whatever is comfortable for you. And just going to have a, a few moments of breathing in. So you're going to breathe in slowly. So you're breathing in. You know healing and light and beauty and that presence of God hold for a few moments and then slowly breathe out and let go of tension and stress and all those things we need to let go of. So let's do the breathing about three times and then just have maybe a couple minutes of quiet with our eyes closed. So let's start the, the breathing. So breathe in slowly. Breathe out slowly.
when you're ready, just take another breath or two, relax and open your eyes. Okay. And here's another prayer, or actually a quote from a poem by T.S. Eliot. I said to my soul, be still and wait without hope, for hope would be hope for the wrong thing. Wait without love, for love would be love for the wrong thing. There is yet faith. But the faith and the love and the hope all are in the waiting. Wait without thought, for you are not ready for thought. So the darkness shall be the light, and the stillness the dancing. Interesting. So, how did everyone, how did everyone do over the last few days? Did that, did you have a chance to set up a spot in your home, or out in your garden, or wherever, boy, wherever is your spot that is your place to read and pray? Would anyone like to share how what you've done? Did anyone set up uh, anything with like a candle or a cross or, or anything? Yeah. last week, this time of year can be so busy. So it's, it's a good thing that we are going through this Advent study because it's forcing us to think, to slow down, to pray, meditate, reflect. We can still do all the busyness. It's interesting how you can, you can take 10 or 15 minutes away from that busyness and, and you can, everything else will still get done anyways. Mm -hmm. right? We usually use the biz, well, maybe maybe not for some people, yeah, okay. <laughs> but generally, most things will get done, but we use the busyness as a reason not to take time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we need it. Because if we don't recharge, and Jesus did that, didn't he? Mm -hmm. We hear he would go off to pray. And I think his life was a little busy and hectic at times. <laughs> Maybe just a few demands on him. <laughs> but it was important. And we, we need that time. So thank you for, for engaging in that and being involved in that. So did anything come out of last week that you'd like to share? Anything from one of our discussions or in the days after, because every day has its own little thing, and every day had another part of the quadrant of the compass, whether it was the mind or soul, or vocation, or whatever we were talking about. Was there anything that you would like to share in, in our group? Oh, Bobby? I have a question. Yeah. Um, it says, patience is about growth. Yes. Can you explain that? And I couldn't quite understand that the only thing I could come up with is that if we become more patient, we automatically become kinder, I think. Okay. Well, let's talk about that. Thank you, Bobby, for setting that up. We didn't plan this, actually. This is perfect. <laughs> what do you think of that term? It comes out of the image of the seed, right? Yes. yes. Last week. Patience is, a, is about growth and leads to growth. What do you think that means? Have any of you had a chance, in addition to Bobby, to think about that? Even if you're struggling with it, don't understand it, say that too. How does patience? Um, I, I, I took the Atlantic test and I was living at um, up there, and I remember talking about how we've all got God inside of us. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, we've all got. God inside of us, so to bring him out, we sometimes have to be patient. 
patient and quiet and let that come out of us. That's kind of what I got out of it. Okay. Did, every, did everyone hear that? So being patient gives us time in that presence also of God to allow God to come out, to God to work, work on us. And that whole idea that we are so impatient, we want everything done yesterday. But patience forces us to slow down. It also forces us to be aware in different ways. You know, when we do take time, we are hopefully more aware that God is actually present with us. And that might help us to change. Any, uh, any other? Oh, okay. okay, Joyce and then Deacon Becky. Well, I, I found, okay, this, this last week I was approached to uh, serve on a board of directors. And I really don't have the skills to do what they wanted me to do. So I did, I listened to what they were saying when they were trying to sort of um, <laughs> they were complimenting me to try to take the positions. And I think in that way I grew because because I was listening and I, I had patience to listen in order to make the decision to, to say, no, I cannot do this because I don't have the talents you're looking for. They finally listened. <laughs> so, patience to listen. Patience to listen. I, I was just going to say that um, when you plant a seed at all, that I know I always, when I was younger, would get real impatient. Why isn't that thing growing? And I notice that um, when I plant a seed and I go off and forget about it, and come back and it's just, oh my goodness, look, it's it's three inches high. Or maybe another seed didn't grow. I know I planted the seeds that we got from Lent last um, spring and and uh, some came up and some didn't. And I think that's kind of what happens, at least for me, with God, is I plant seeds and, and I wait and sometimes they blossom and Sometimes they don't, and it's um, my paying attention and being patient. Anything else from last week before we move on to this week? Well, I had a lot of company last week. And boy, it gives you a lot of chance to be impatient. <laughs> and it made me realize how impatient I was. Um, other people had to cook a after a couple of days. And um, I kept telling them what to do, and I shouldn't have been doing that. I was impatient with them. <laughs> but it's... Next but week we will, yeah, but, but you, you've now. noticed. See, that's the difference. What, what the study is helping us to do is we're starting to notice the impatience. But maybe before we weren't really noticing it or, or identifying it in any way. Well, next week we'll be talking about practicing patience with others. But this week, practicing patience with ourselves. That's a hard one, isn't it? But I shouldn't speak for all of you. You're you're all you you've all done that. You're not impatient with yourselves, are you? Wow. <laughs> How about on a golf course? <laughs> on a golf course, okay. Yeah. Well, just also want to say hi to those who watch this after the fact. I know there's a bunch who, who are following our series and some from up north and all over the country. I want to ask does anyone have any comments on Sunday, the reading from Sunday, for the, which was started on page 21? 
And then we've only had really two days, yesterday and today, as far as up to this point. On Sunday, we have the reading. You know, the reading was from Luke chapter 3, verses 1 to 6, as far as the gospel reading. But it's interesting, um, the quote that Jason uh, Levan uses, Patience as a Process, on page 21 at the top of the page, he takes the quote out of Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. It says, I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. What do you think of that, that quote? And how does it relate to you? Does it resonate with you in any way? So I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Any thought about that? Any comment? Do you believe God has begun a good work in you? Do you believe you're worthy of God beginning a good work in you? Yeah? I think God is within everybody. Some people don't let him out. Some people don't let him out. But um, uh, he, he is there. He is with you. Just, just saying that he is there. He is with you. And uh, if you're a mean person, it's because you're not letting God help you. The end of it got to me is uh, uh, when Christ returns, and I figure that that's when we return to Christ. That's what I was going to say. I, it, reading that, it was finished on the day when Christ calls me home. I don't know what purpose he has for me. And I'll keep walking the road until I either discover what it is that he wants me to do or I will meet him afterwards. Thank you. The important part about that passage from Philippians is that we are worthy of God working through us and in us and with us. And when you think about it, God must have a lot of patience. Because we constantly fight God. We don't listen. We run away. We do lots of things that get in the way. And there are times we are fully there with God too. I mean, that's part of living, that's part of our life. As part of our challenge to grow in faith and to walk as disciples of Christ. But if God can have patience with us, then we in turn, made in the image of God, loved by God and children of God, that we should have patience with ourselves. And generally I think we're the hardest ones on ourselves. People may be hard on us and come down on us. I mean, that happens, right? But we tend to be the hardest on ourselves. Our own worst enemies. We can be our own worst enemies. Becky was just saying. There was um, a quote that was used by Jason, and he said that his wife, Christy, who can easily fall asleep, he gets, you know what, and I can do that too. I could be sitting, up, I could be lying awake thinking about everything in the world that I have to do, and she could be sleeping, like she's like, like that, okay? So I could relate to what he was saying here. But what I really liked was, right in the middle of the page, page 21, he says that his wife said wisely, the beauty of the night is that it makes room for a new day. 
The beauty of the night is that it makes room for a new day. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Does it? Do you, do you understand that? Do you understand what, what, she, what she was trying to say to her husband? You know? We tend to build so much up onto ourselves that we can't let go a lot of the times, right? There's always too much going on. But the thing about the night is we can just let it go. Well, it's not easy. It's not an easy thing. But it's also part of that patience. We can't always do everything. And in worrying about it or thinking about it overnight, not when really we can't sleep, isn't going to make it get done. All we end up is a tired in the or the next day. I mean, that, that's just the story that he's sharing, but it's so, it's so true. And he says at the end of his reflection, on page 22, at the end of the day, Advent invites us to rest patiently with ourselves in the paradox of discovering that all the unfinished work of our lives is not an obstacle, but somehow becomes an invitation for God to enter and birth wisdom and growth again and anew. What I'd like you to do is take that little little um, quote on page 22 and talk in your groups. Talk in your groups about that. So Advent invites us to rest patiently with ourselves in the paradox of discovering that all the unfinished work of our lives is not an obstacle but somehow becomes an invitation for God to enter and birth wisdom and growth again and anew. So let's take about maybe six, seven minutes just to talk about that in our groups. How do you understand that? Do you agree with it? Do you see hope in that kind of a statement? How does it reflect to you in your own situation? Yeah. <laughs> 
Some of that would happen, pandemic or no pandemic. I think they would still get, try to get you, but you're using the pandemic as, oh, there's shortages. You better buy now and, and get get a, your order in. And yeah. But there was one thing that when I was going around um, that was mentioned, and I'm gonna, that I thought, yeah, it, it 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 is there. We we talk about patience with ourselves. Okay. There's all kinds of obstacles. It can be again. It, important things or not important things, or it can be activities that are ways of avoidance. You know when you have to do something in the house and you don't do it? And I could always find other things to do instead of 
doing the cleaning or doing whatever has to be done and, or get to my sermon or whatever. Those. We always can find ways to avoid. Right? So I'm going to put avoidance in there too. <laughs> Okay, we can always find ways to avo avoid, which we lost some of those way, those things during the pandemic when we didn't have the same excuses. Because you couldn't, or, oh, I have to go out and do something. Well, you weren't able to go out and do something. So we lost some of those, those things because we were restricted. But these obstacles do get in the way of patience with ourselves. Yet the quote we had talked about the paradox about how events and things in our lives that need to get done that we can't get to, that we're impatient with ourselves because we can't do it and can't get it finished and so on, that perhaps it's an invitation to allow God to enter into our life and to help us work through that, thinking of that quote from Philippians, the good works that God has already started in you, right? God, which means God is working in your life. It implies that if God started a work in you, God is still working in your life. But all these things get in the way of us even recognizing that God's working in our lives. But what was mentioned to me was sometimes we know those, we know, we know, yes, I know God should be in my life to help me through it. That's the head knowledge. Yeah. <clears throat> but the hard part is getting it to be heart knowledge. So the question is how do we get the knowledge to go from our head into our heart to allow the growth to happen? So acceptance was one faith. faith? Prayer. So, prayer. Prayer. Okay. I'm just, ah. Hold on a second. So we have faith. Prayer. Think, uh, meditation helps, at least for me. Meditation. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to go here meditation too. What else? What else could help from head to heart? Moving it from I know it in my mind, but I don't experience it yet. Don't don't understand it yet here or feel it. Journaling helps. Journaling. History. What's that? History. History. History of, of experiences. History of experiences. Okay. Okay. Talking to another person who's also prayerful. Prayer so, uh, talking to others. Talking this is to talking. Others. Prayer partner. Talking to other, let's say, Counselor. prayer partner, let's go. Okay. Or spiritual director, right? Or, or spiritual director, yeah. What about mindfulness? Hmm? Mindfulness, when you just pay attention to the nature mindfulness. of Mindfulness. Okay. All right. That's head, isn't it? Mindfulness. Or is it hard to your heart because you're watching nature? Well, mindfulness, okay. I mean, mindfulness can be both. So it can be in the logical, you know, knowledge. But it's also a mindfulness of, of God's presence. So it can take on two sides to it, right? It's like becoming aware. Becoming aware. But how, okay, so how do you become aware? Even our hiking and stuff like that, but just out there in nature, just say, 
outside air and everything just makes your head much more clear. Nature. That, that, yeah. Uh, yeah, nature. Let's go na nature. Out in the natural world. Mm -hmm. I just believe it's going to happen if God wants it to. It'll happen if God wants it to, but mm -hmm. does God want it to? Well, if, if God does want it to, then it's not going to happen. But what do you think? Does God want you to become more aware of God's presence and work in your life or not? Of course. Of course. So, God is there to help us work through it, but sometimes there are obstacles out of our own hands that we can't control. I mean, the current world situation. Right? But then there are a lot of things that are in our hands. To our priorities, how we live our life. What is important and what's not important. You know, where is God in our lives? Some people, if they sat down and thought about it, God might be number four or five or six. If even. The, the whole point is God needs to be <clears throat> number one. Because it's God who helps us work through all the other parts of our life and how we live. How we love and live and relate to our family and friends. How we work in the world. God is the start of it all. Not the end of it. Not the, at the bottom of the heap. Because when we put God at the bottom, we're saying we're more important than God. We make ourselves, our own, you know, our own experience, our own schooling, our own whatever, almost an idol, because that becomes the focus. I could do it all myself. I don't need God. And that's when things fall apart. So, patience. Patience with ourselves. Ultimately, to get through the, the obstacles to be able to be patient with ourselves, we, we need God within to be able to help us have patience, to help us to have strength, to heal if we need healing. We all have things in our lives that need to be addressed. Everyone. Whether it's stuff that goes back 50, 60 years, or whether it's something that just happened recently, or the things that are beyond our control, pandemics, loss of employment, illness, loss of a loved one, the things that we can't control. And boy, we want to be control freaks. When there are things that we can't control, even more so, we need God. We need God to strengthen, to give us patience. <laughs> Patience with ourselves, because again, we're the ones who are hardest on ourselves. When we can't, you know, get out of bed because we're so down, or we can't face another day. Somewhere in there, we, we lose sight that God wants to give us a step up. God wants to give us some strength, courage, and patience. But it's not always easy. I mean, this is a whole life thing. And then a lot of times we, we, we might get to a certain point, and then we fall back again. We sort of get, you know, hit in the head, and we fall back, and we have to start over again. It's a whole cycle. But, hopefully through experience, we don't fall back to zero. Maybe we fall off the wagon a little bit. But hopefully, we have learned enough in our relationship with God that even when we do sort of go off track, and we see that in the Bible all the time, the people of Israel constantly fell off. But God's love always brought them back. The relationship didn't start back at zero, but it's 
it has to be restart again. It's the same with in friendships, okay? You may have a close friend, and perhaps something happened, you had a fallout with that friend. Ever have that happen to you? Yeah. You know? it, it happens, right? Your best friend suddenly, you know, you, you don't even want to talk to him or her. And maybe years go by before you talk. But then when the relationship is back again, there's a sense of catching up, but it doesn't go back to zero. There's all that history you've had in that friendship that you start again maybe a little more cautious, you know, because you're, if you're hurting from whatever that breakup was, there's a bit of trust, learning to trust again, right? That happens with people of Israel and God all the time or us with God, but it doesn't start at zero. It sort of takes off again from where it ended up, but it might be a little slower until that trust is, is gained again. So there t our whole life is like that, and patience, patience with ourselves, and patience with God. I mean, that'll be the last session we'll talk about. But we need God in our life so that we can have patience with ourselves because God needs to continue to teach us and help us in decisions and, and, and help to guide us and that's where prayer, mindfulness and faith, prayer and meditation, acceptance, journaling, history of experiences, talking to others, prayer partners perhaps, going out to nature, all those things help us become aware of God's presence and how God has made a difference in your life and how we can try to go a little bit more from the head to the heart. And again, it may take you a whole life to do that. But somewhere in there is once we start experiencing some sense of God's presence in our life, we gain some of that growth of that seed that was talked about. And as we start growing, there's a little more patience with ourselves. Any comments on that? On this part of what we just talked about? Because then we're going to break up into one more group before we finish. Any question? Any comment? Okay. Um, Here's a question I'd like you to think about in your table groups. When you talk, next week we're going to talk about patience with other people. Right? So I'm wondering, do you see any connection between the way you practice patience with yourselves, with how you treat other people and patience with them? Do you, do you understand the question? Do you see any relationship or connection between the way you treat yourself in terms of patience and how you treat others in terms of patience with other people? There was a, there was a quote uh, from Monday, from yesterday, it said, to paraphrase a core Christian teaching, we are to be patient with our neighbor as we are patient with ourselves. That's on page 23, at, near the top of the page. We are to be patient with our neighbor as we are patient with ourselves. You know, it's paraphrasing, love your neighbor, you know, as you love yourselves. What about patience? So I want you to talk about that, and this will lead into next week, although there's, you know, all the daily reflections still to come over the next few days. Think about that for a second. How does, how does your treating yourself in terms of patience, or practicing patience with yourself, affect how you are patient with other people? Is there any connection with that? So think about that. We'll, we'll take about seven or eight minutes and then we'll, we'll round up. Very hard. Because a lot of ways to do it. I think I <laughs> 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 and then, 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 and then,
yourself in terms of patience and how you deal with other people and patience. Is there? Well, let's start with this, your table. I, I feel I'm given the example of Thanksgiving prep and Thanksgiving Day, and I was about ready to hang Mark because <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm going to be hanging Mark. Because he just was a bit critical of people peeling and, and cutting and and there's certain length of their string bean and the way they were going to cut the pie. And it was like Sandy Go and Sandy And it was just a real reactionary. And I'm the one that gets the that he leashes too. But it was just, you know, a lot of the team depended on, like, I, I said I was ready to change my name because, you know, I just, like, where are the decorations? Were well, they are in the same place that they've been for the last at least six years that we've been here? And getting boxes and stuff, it was just all that self-motivation. And I guess, I, I probably didn't sleep well the night before, so that was my own lack of enough rest, and that I probably had less patience, but it started at, in the kitchen and transferred out here. But it, I, I think everything went smoothly for the day. So. <laughs> and it did, and it was delicious. And we never measured anything. <laughs> yeah. But it can happen. And sometimes, another way of maybe instead of patience is we could be hard on ourselves, but and sometimes we'll be equally as hard on other people, not always realizing that maybe they don't have the same experience, so they don't have the same interest. You know, people want to help, but they're not necessarily perfectionists. And that's the hard part. So how do you, <laughs> that's a whole other, that's probably a whole other session. How, how does a perfectionist have patience with other people who are not perfectionists? <laughs> Micromanagers. So, I mean, now these are words I think we can, we can relate a little more to, right? There's always people who are micromanagers and are perfectionists, and they don't always understand. And, and they don't mean necessarily to create an issue, but they don't understand, well, well, I'm that way, so why isn't someone else that way? And, and offices, yeah, offices can have that interesting dynamic too. And churches. So, um, anything from this table? I misunderstood and thought she said, um, do the things that aggravate you aggravate in others aggravate you? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, okay. <laughs> but, but that's, I mean, it's similar. Yeah, um, I mean, okay, we could just use what we just heard as that example. You know, if you like to do certain things a certain way, and if not, it, you get upset if it's not done a certain way, you could get upset with someone else who doesn't do that. So patience, but it's patience. If we're not patient with ourselves, it's sometimes harder to be patient with other people. It's a, it's a straight reflection. And again, next week we'll talk more about that because it's about patience with others. So yeah, it's, a, it's, but it's basically this, it's part of it. Oh, how about that, that table there? Anything, anything from your tables too? Well, um, I, I, I said I think I'm a failure. <laughs> I, 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 I am patient with myself, but I'm not patient with others. So I, okay. So I don't know that the, the relationship is kind of reversed there. Um, okay. Well, 
Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Can you help me? <laughs> we have to send him <laughs> Yeah. No, but but it does happen too, right? So you can be it can be the other way around. It could be patience with yourself but not with other people. But then it's discovering why. Like what is it about what they're doing, or, or maybe it's the people themselves, or, or if it's everyone, then we need to talk deeply another time. <laughs> Not everyone. No. Just people that don't say good morning to me. Um, good morning, Stu. Uh, <laughs> Doris? Well, I've always been a perfectionist. Perfectionist, okay. And um, I've always been impatient with other people that didn't up to my expectations, uh -huh. but since I've had um, nobility issues and health issues, and people have helped me so much, I think I'm, I've developed a pace, more of a patience with other people as a result of their goodness to me. Um, okay. So, if you, did, if you didn't hear, or if people wa um, watching it, in here. So Doris, very much a perfectionist, had, would have impatience with other people, but more in recent times because of your own mobility issues and people helping you, and you, you've changed. There's, there's a change in, in, in your level of patience. And you were saying acceptance, right? Back to acceptance. Yeah. Edna? But we were very judgmental, particularly with adult children, because they didn't do it the way we did. <laughs> oh, okay. Patient, patience with themselves, oh, yeah. but less patience with, with adult children who didn't do, who don't do things the way they should be doing. <laughs> All right. So, so patience, practicing patience. Now we come back to that whole thing. It affects us personally. It affects organizations. It affects relationships. It has a profound impact. But ultimately, patience with ourselves is so important because when we, when we learn to practice patience with ourselves and we learn that God can help us with that, it does have an a impact and an effect on everyone else around us. If we could be learn to be more patient, hopefully we can learn to have patience with others. But many times we, whether we know it or not, when we are impatient with ourselves, when we're more critical of ourselves, it tends to reflect out onto other people. But again, we'll talk about that more next week. So thank you, everyone, for today. Please. So take time. Take, your, take time for your daily reading and some prayer. Do the, do the tough breathing and the quietness before you start doing your reading. And if you can... Take a few notes. It's nice to see, I've seen some people's books have little scribbles all over them. Write down some thoughts, and, and if you can share them, because the reason I say to share, if you can, your notes, of course, inform you, remind you what you were thinking at that time, maybe when you read the reflection for the first time, or had a chance to go back and something came to your mind. Something you share might be worth gold to someone else. So it's not about, you know, sharing for the sake of sharing, or you don't want someone to know about you. You know, if you're able to share you something you your insight might help someone else. So if you can, come with something from the next four or five days that that perhaps you've just jotted a note down that may help someone else. And part of the, this whole process, the study, 
is that we can help each other, right? And we can help us all move a little, maybe a little more patient on many levels of our life. I'm just going to finish off with a, with a prayer. And this is from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. O oh God, early in the morning I cry to you. Help me to pray and to con concentrate my thoughts on you. I cannot do this alone. In me there is darkness, but with you there is light. I am lonely, but do not leave me. I am feeble in heart, but with you there is help. I am restless, but with you there is peace. In me there is bitterness, but with you there is patience. I do not understand your ways, but you know the way for me. Restore me to liberty and enable me so to live now that I may answer before you and before you. Lord, whatever this day may bring, your name be praised. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone.